I will just set the timer on. Give me just one second. One, two, three, go. Hello. My name is Dr. Hafiz, one of the psychiatrists here in the mental health. Are you Mrs. Brown? Yes, I'm Mrs. Brown. Nice to meet you. Um, I do understand that you have some concerns and queries about uh, Mr. Brown. Well, I, I don't want to be rude, but uh, I expected to talk with a neurologist, not a psychiatrist. I'm wondering why he. I'm talking to you. I don't want I, with all my respect. Okay, I'm sure. I do understand your concern. Um, let me explain for you that um, brain and uh, body is um, we uh, we concerned that they are one unit, and sometimes um, physical symptoms may be caused by uh, brain problems or brain or psychiatric problems. So that's I'm here to uh, support you and offer help. Okay, doctor. So, uh, well, um, okay. What, what, how can I uh, help you? Okay, I, I do understand your concern. Would you tell me what happened in the beginning? What's your understanding about Mr. Mr. Brown's condition? Well, uh, all what we know that he has, as he says, brain cancer, and and there is a tumor which makes him feel that a terrible headache, and he needs the investigations to help him to understand his problem better and to stop the management. This is all what I know. Okay, I don't understand this. Would you tell me since when he started complaining uh, of this headache? This was about six months. Mm. Okay, and how it, uh, it was progressing? Well, I, I cannot tell you that it is increasing or decreasing. Sometimes he is okay. Sometimes he feels that this headache is so uh, agonizing that he doesn't go to work. It has been going on like this for six months. Mm, so it affects his uh, his uh, occupational life. Yes. Yes. Mm, okay. So would you tell me, uh, is there anything happened just before this belief of his brain tumor, of his brain tumor or headache? Well, well, well before that, I think his uncle died uh, maybe eight months or nine months ago because of a brain tumor. He keeps saying that it runs in the family. That's it. But so I can see other that. than this, there was nothing. So he experienced someone who had this kind of problem. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, has he has uh, has he experienced uh, any psychiatric problem before? Has he contacted any mental health service before? No, no. Mm. Uh, does he have any medical problem? No, no. Okay. So thank you for answering my questions, Mrs. Brown. I would like to uh, um, pass through what you have done so far. Is it okay? Okay, no problem. I, I can see that Mr. Brown has uh, expressed, uh, presented with a headache and he was convinced that he has brain tumor. Uh, however, he doesn't have any uh, problem or any symptom other than the headache. Uh, he was referred to the neurologist and actually um, the neurologist examined him and he's done uh, many tests and investigations and all of them were was normal. Am I so, clear so far? Okay, so what is the problem? So you mean that he is he doesn't have anything? He is faking the symptoms? Yes, we confirmed that by doing several tests and we don't have any, um, uh, uh, any idea that he, ha he might have organic cause or physical problem. What we think about now is that he has a condition called hypochondriasis. Have you heard anything about it? What is this hypochondriasis? Um, okay, uh, I, I, uh, I would like to make it simple for you. It's sometimes called health anxiety disorder in which the patient might have some um, ideas or being convinced that he has um, a serious medical problem uh, was diagnosed for him. In uh, the case of Mr. Brown, it is the brain tumor. This is not relieved either by a continuous reassurance of negative tests and uh, and surroundings. Um, what could be the reason for this problem? Um, actually, the, the main reason or the definite reason is not known till now. However, uh, there are multiple theories for that. 
uh, in the case of Mr. Brown, I believe that he has, as you told me, that he has experienced uh, the, uh, the death of his, uh, his brother, his father, because of uh, brain tumor. So he has experienced such a condition before. Um, and, and other theories postulate that it might be due to chemical imbalance in the brain. I see, I see. So do you feel that he might get better, doctor? Do you think he will get better? Well, he is now um, in safe hands in the right place. And I believe that uh, we have uh, to support him to make him better. But this needs uh, cooperation and uh, intervention. Okay, doctor, so how can you help him? Um, okay, I, well, I believe that um, we have to understand in the beginning that he is not faking his symptoms. Um, he, he has a problem that of the brain to cope with the stress that he has. So we have to understand this. Uh, and on the same time, uh, we have to involve him um, with psychological treatments. It's called a talk, it's some kind of uh, talk therapy. It's called cognitive behavior therapy. Doctor, but uh, he was, uh, well, do you think that if I know if you allowed him to one minute remaining to do the MRI, he will feel better? Uh, I believe the neurologist has done several investigations, and one of the main uh, cornerstones of uh, treating him and managing him is to stop any further investigation because this might uh, uh, does not cause any reassurance for him. Am I clear so far? Okay. And also, at the same time, we have to give him some medical uh, treatments, including uh, antidepressants that may regain the balance of his of the chemicals in the brain. I see. Okay, with you? I see. Okay. So uh, I have some uh, leaflets to uh, introduce to you that might help you and in gathering more information about this problem, which is hypochondriasis. Do um, you have any concern right now? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm here to help you. Thank you. How did you feel about what you did? I tried my best. <laughs> Good. Yes, you are honest. So I hope that you, uh, that our colleagues are very clever psychiatrists, definitely just give him some feedback according to what you feel. This will help all of us to uh, know what can be the problem in the performance of anyone and avoid these mistakes. Okay, so the first thing, um, you wasted some time in gathering uh, some history issues which are not related to the task. Okay. Number two, avoid the sentence of let me. I know that you are translating it from Arabic. Uh, this is a very polite way in conversation, but I, I, this is a feedback from one of the uh, those who are living there in native English. It can be considered to be impolite because this means that I'm not giving you the chance. So avoid let me. Okay, let's say that uh, I will be glad to discuss this okay, with you. Just avoid the for let me or give me the chance. It can be misinterpreted. Um, be fluent when you explain the issue of our mind and body. This is a very common question. Why am I seeing a psychiatrist? The mind and body is one unit. And many times the physical symptoms can have psychological causes, particularly if the investigations and the clinical assessment did not show any abnormality. That's why it will be helpful to have the psychiatric assessment and consultation. Make it fluent. I felt that you were struggling to explain it. Um, so when I ask you, is he faking the symptoms? You said, yes, avoid this, please. You I said, yes, <laughs> yes, you said, yes. So don't say this, he's not faking symptoms. And you, it was a bit disorganized. Um, use, when you say multiple theories, you say just there are some factors. Don't say, uh, well, the predisposing factors, you did not justify it properly and you used multiple theory and some, it could be considered to be the use also of medical jargon. <clears throat> the prognostic factors, actually, when I asked you, did he, will he get better? You did not answer this question. All right. Uh, the management, the, uh, when I ask you, is he going to, the MRI, why he is good. Will you do the MRI? He said that it would not cause any reassurance. No, it causes reassurance. 
but a temporary relief, but the negative drawback of this, that it would emphasize the uh, fact or the, the thought that he is ill and he requires the investigations and eventually uh, it will have a negative effect. Okay, so that's all. Um, let's see the feedback of our colleagues. Um, nobody is giving you any feedback, I don't know. Give him some feedback, doctors. Okay, so let's see according to the um, to our uh, PDF. Right. Okay. Okay, doctors. This is the PDF of the hypochondriasis. So our plan is simple, and this which this is the plan which we will follow in all the stations of the management. Okay, first point is to introduce yourself. You can either start by gathering the biopsychosocial information and risk, 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 risk. Always ask about the risk in any stations, whether it is management history, to show that you're a safe practitioner and the risk is important in your assessment. You can either, by introduction, you can either gather information or, or uh, explain the problem and then do your formulation and eventually the management. So these are the five steps. Let's see how can we apply this. So this is your introduction and it must be simple. Address yourself and address and greet the patient, explain the cause of or the reason of this setting. And then I ask you, why am I talking to psychiatrists? This is a very common question. And as you can see here, it is even in the uh, role player's instruction. She is curious to know the reason of the referral. So be ready for this question, doctor. It is, not, it is very common to be asked, why am I seeing a psychiatrist? And this is the simple answer and make it fluent. You don't need to have a long lecture to justify why you are talking uh, with her. Number two, uh, then you, you start either by explanation or gathering the biopsychosocial, actually it is it will go according to the flow of your discussion with the role player. So if she starts to ask you what is the problem, start by explanation. If she wants to know, uh, if she gives you the chance to uh, go ahead and assess and uh, your the, and go and take control of the consultation, you can start by gathering the biopsychosocial instead of the explanation. But here she will ask you if she is, if he doesn't have any headache and if he is suffering, uh, if he, there is no physical problem, so what is the problem here? And you start to explain to her the uh, issue of the uh, hypochondriasis, which is health anxiety disorder. Okay, A simple explanation, make your words simple, avoid jargon, one of the anxiety disorders in which the patient misinterprets the minor physical symptoms because of anxiety. And he firmly believes that there is an underlying serious medical disorder despite being healthy by the clinical assessment and investigations. Very simple and fluent. You don't need more than this. Is he faking the symptoms? Definitely don't say yes. He genuinely believes that he is, is having a brain tumor but this is because of the anxiety, not because of an underlying medical problem. Now here, what is the reason which, in other words, this is other predisposing factors. Yeah. Pay attention that this is an area also which the Royal College is focusing on. We know that there is no particular reason for any psychiatric disorder, but there are some factors which make the patients more prone to develop one uh, psychiatric disorder than the other people. For example, in the hypochondriasis, if there is a chronic childhood illness, okay, and uh, being raised by a family which seeks medical services for significant uh, physical symptoms and past history of psychiatric disorders and chemical imbalance, all these are factors which increase the chance of having a patient, of having the problem of health anxiety disorder. Okay, I ask you, will he be, uh, this is a very, this is a question which you will get and 
And unfortunately, exactly like what you did, the candidates feel, feel that it is difficult to answer it. She will request the, do the, the MRI for her husband and be ready for this question. Simply says to her that this is not helpful because uh, it will emphasize the idea that he is sick and it will increase the anxiety. Is he going to get better? This is a question for the prognostic factors. Now, we, it is not just, don't make the answer an empty reassurance. We know that there are some prognostic factors. Let's see what are the prognostic factors. We can say something in terms of that the response of the patients to the treatment is different. However, there are some factors which favor the good outcome, like what? Starting the treatment as early as possible, being cooperative with the management plan, the good level of functioning before the illness, the absence of stressors or substance misuse or past psychiatric history, and the good support around it. All these are good prognostic factors, okay? That's it. Don't make the answer, is he going to get better and empty assurance? This is a common mistake. It is a question about the prognostic factors. Now, before going through, any questions so far? Now, now, pay attention that you need to do a formulation. I've shared in the group that there has been a, an article and they asked the consultants what is the most cause of the failure of the candidates in the management station. And all of them said the primary cause that they don't know how to do a formulation. But before doing the formulation, you must have a good background about the patient. So you must gather some information about him, the biopsychosocial and risk, okay? Now, the physical issue or physical points in the patients are already cleared. So all what you need is to gather some information about his psychological and social and risk areas, okay? That's it. Simple question, has he ever been in contact with psychiatric services? Is he type of uh, person who gets easily worried? This means if he is an anxious person, how about his mood? And then social information about the stressors and support, and eventually the risk doctors. Don't forget the risk in any stations in the cask. Always ask questions about the risk, even in hypochondriasis. Because you will see that in the mark sheet, there is a point for those who ask about the risk, okay? This PDF is formulated according to the mark sheet. Then the formulation. Now, the formulation has some sort, I, it is explained in one of my, uh, in one in the, my YouTube channel. I hope that you uh, have a look at it, how to formulate. But just, uh, I will show you, to you but we'll, I will explain now how to formulate just to, as long as we are here. We will see how can we formulate this. Okay, so there is a simple uh, technique for the formulation. There are many ways by which you are going to do formulation, but avoid the academic formulation. It is very lengthy. There is another way to formulate, which is very simple. It's called the S-bar technique, in which you are going to talk about the situation, the background, your assessment and recommendation. Their assessment and recommendation are going to be in the management plan. It's enough to talk about the situation and the background. Let's see an example here. So talking about the situation, you can say that to recap what we have discussed, Mr. X has schizophrenia, which is the main psychological problem, okay? And then talk about the risk. There is also a potential risk to his the neighbors, for example. So the situation is simple, the psychological problem, without any historical details and the level of risk. And the background is all the information 
which you know or you need to know about the patient. For example, all this on the background that he have diabetic, uh, uncontrolled high blood sugar level. He has history of being inpatient uh, several times, and we need to know more about his psychological or his social circumstances. So I talked about the physical, the biological, the physical, the psychological, and the social. Please mute your mics, please. Okay, it needs some practice in order to master it. But the main issue is that don't do your formulation before gathering the inform important information which will help you to do the right formulation. Okay, where is my... Having said this, can you please formulate for us, Dr. Uh, Amr? Formulate the station which you have just done. Yes. Uh, so I can uh, I can see that uh, Mr. Brown um, has um, uh, he is uh, complaining of uh, brain tumor, which uh, we, and by no 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 this is this is not the psychological problem. Your psycho that he has health anxiety disorder. So your formulation yes. is just to say what is the problem now. He has health anxiety disorder. Health anxiety disorder. Uh, yes. He has no he has no previous psychiatric history or no no medical history, uh, and I can see that uh, he experienced a social uh, a stressor that his father died uh, out of the brain tumor, uh, so that we can relate this with uh, uh, the stressor that he has experiencing. As far as I collected information yes, from, the, yes. from the patient. Okay, so the formulation. The first line is that we are going to talk about the main psychological problem, okay, which is the health anxiety disorder and the level of risk. There is low risk because of his condition. So before going through what, how we can help him, I would like to highlight the most important points in his condition, which we'll focus on in our management. Mr. X, Mr. Brown has a health, is having a health anxiety disorder. There is low risk because of his condition. All this in the background of having no past history of psychiatric disorder, no social stresses, and there is good support around him. Any other points which you would like to discuss? This formulation is the first thing you are going to be scored for in the mark sheet. That's why it is one of the points of the management plan. Okay. Now, the management. First thing you should you want to do is to show that you are a professional assertive doctor. What Dr. Amr is going to do? What are you going to do? I would like to see Mr. Brown myself and to explain the diagnosis for him and address all his concerns. Show that you are professional, okay? So that you are going to do something. And the next thing is that you want to, to explain where he's going to be treated. So he is going to be treated at home and followed up uh, regularly in the clinic and at home by nurse. So what are you going to do and where he's going to be treated? These are the two points which you are going to talk about in the management plan. And when you, when you go on with our uh, sessions, you will find that these are the typical points every time you are going to talk about the management. The first thing is that you talk about what you are going to do and where the patient is going to be treated. Here, I will see Mr. X myself to explain the diagnosis for him and address all his concerns. He will be treated at home and followed up regularly in the clinic and at home by a nurse. That's it. Then the investigations. He needs to do some blood tests to make sure that he is physically fit for the medications, physically fit for the medications which he might need. I will need to do for him CBC, kidney functions, liver functions tests, and, and blood chemistry. Okay? Are you with me, doctor? Yes. So these are the first two points which you are going to talk in all the management plan or all man discussion in when you are to talk about the management and all the management stages. Then we are going to talk about the actual psychological treatment. 
we have there will be a team must talk about the team not to show that you know some big words but just be, because you want to show to the examiner that you are going to approach the patient holistically there will be a team who will cover all his needs physically psychologically and socially psychologically which is the backbone is the talking therapy particularly the by the cbt the medications he will benefit from antidepressants okay physically he is fit so this is the main treatment in the case of hypochondriasis is going to have a talking therapy and antidepressants to control his anxiety and finally terminate the station. Let's see the mark sheet and this is the most important thing in order to know how you are going to be addressed because unfortunately the passing rate in the management station is, is not good because the candidates don't know how they are assessed and, and what is expected from them. You just go and talk about the issue of hypochondriasis, which is not the case. Everyone seeing the mark sheet, and you see what is the first point which you are going to be scored for? Excuse me. Okay, so. Now you have a look at the mark sheet. The first point which you are going to be scored for is your ability to formulate the problem effectively. That's why you must practice how to formulate. Please watch the clip of explanation how to formulate and practice the formulation in every station which you are going to have. Phase to recognize significance of findings and results which you did, no, you did fire. Uh, identify the results. Management plan, which reflects knowledge of current best practice. As you can see, only one point for the management plan, which includes the, uh, the, the issues of the medications and token therapy. There are many other points other than focusing on the token therapy and medications, which and, uh, unfortunately, most of the candidates just go through deep in these two simple or, or just only these biological and psychological approach and forget that there are many other points required from them. In this context, Dr. Amla, I think he talked about the uh, talking therapy and the uh, antidepressants. Does not pay sufficient attention to the patient's health view. Pay attention to this. Number four, that's why in the PDF, I've said I'm going to talk to the patient myself and explain for him his diagnosis. Those who do not pay attention to the patient and talk about the patient as if he is nothing, we're going to do for him this and that, and neglect the point of view of the patient or even explaining to him the problem, they might miss this point, okay? If you can see our first point in the approach, what did we say? Where is the patient going to be treated and what are you going to do? I'll see Mr. X myself to explain the diagnosis for him and address all his concerns. This will help you to score the point number four. Okay. okay. Does not develop adequate risk management plan. There is a point for risk whether it is a station in which there is a need for high risk or low risk, a station with low risk assessment, whether this or that, you must also always ask about risk because there is always a point for those who ask about the risk. In this context, Dr. Amri did not ask about the risk, so this point might be not scored for you does not identify appropriate psychological or social interventions. He did not ask me about his social circumstances or this, or talk about any social uh, interventions for the patient, okay? And this might not be scored for you. It was not very fluent, so this point number seven might not be scored for you. Uh, I felt you were a bit hectic and reluctant, sometimes uh, anxious, so, Point eight might not be scored for you also. Point 11 and 12, 
can be challenging for the pay, for the candidates whose language is not the first language because as you can see in the management plan we talk it's not like in the history taking or the mental state in the mental state and history taking we only pose questions here we are going to talk and explain the management to explain the diagnosis or answer the questions unfortunately this station is also challenging because it needs some linguistic skills so how can we tackle this problem please have notes write down the sentences which you are going to use and by time you'll find that they are going to be repeated in all the stations okay thank you so much i hope that you found it helpful dr amr well done so who would thank like you. to go next yes please i can and Okay. No wrong. Okay, so how are you? So what is your station? Of the room? It's uh, metabolic syndrome. Okay. metabolic <laughs> Oh, you have two minutes, Doctor. Just arrange your thoughts, write down your notes. Yeah, mm. okay. Ready? Yeah, Reggie. What's your name? Let's say that my name is Robin. Robin, okay. okay let's just one minute. We want to... Okay, stop sharing. One, two, three, go. Good morning, Robin. I am Nuran, one of the doctors in the mental health team. My understanding is that you're here today to discuss around the blood results that you have done. Yes, yes, I want to know what are the results. This is the first time for me to be asked to check the results with a psychiatrist. Yeah, and 
Do you have any idea why we do this regular blood tests? Well, I've been asked to do these uh, blood tests because I'm on clozapine. I do it once every year. And this is the first yeah. time for me to be asked to double check with doctor after having done this test. Yeah, I, I don't want to alarm you. So exactly it's what you mentioned. Those are regular blood tests that we do to monitor for any side effects from the medication that you take, lozepine. Okay. And it just to take it up, to cut it up very early and to work on it to prevent any further complications. How do you I feel see. about that? Well, this sounds helpful. So is there anything wrong with the, with the blood test? So I, I can discuss the results with you, but before that, can you tell me a bit about the clozapine, how it works for you now? No, it is, it's, it's very good and I prefer to, to be on with it since I've started it, everything is correct in my life. Yeah, I'm pleased to hear that. Any problems at all? No, no. No. Um, how long are you on clozapine now? Well, I've been on clozapine for three years now. For three years. And I understand that other medications didn't work very well for you. Well, this uh, what I've been told, they said that they gave, they gave me clozapine because no other medication is helping me. Yeah, yeah. So I have the results now. And it's not really a big thing, but I, I would like to tell you that there has been some abnormal results, mainly regarding your blood sugars. So it was slightly elevated than normal. Yes. Yeah, so that really doesn't mean that we do we need to do now anything, but just by monitoring. So I need to refer you to a GP to monitor, and if there has been persistent high levels of glucose or sugar in your blood, that can lead to diabetes, I see. and that has a lot. Yeah, that has a lot of detrimental factors on the on the body, so it can have some effects on eyes, kidneys, feet, it I can see. lead to coma and death, so that's very serious. Well, 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 I understand, so does this mean that I have high blood sugar level which will cause all of this? So, so it doesn't actually mean that now, but we have, we need to put it in mind, we'll be very mindful about it, that's why we need close monitoring for it. Okay. Anything abnormal, yeah. anything other than this in my blood test, which is not good? So the other thing really is the cholesterol levels or what's called the bad fat in the blood. It's slightly higher as well. And that's easily to be managed. We can give some medications for it. Do you think you can do that? Well, I have no problem, doctor, but I'm wondering, so... What can be the reason behind these abnormalities, Doc? So, so as I mentioned to you, one of the reasons that can be what side effect of clozapine, the medication that you take. Have I you see. noticed any changes in, in your weight recently? Yes, yes, I've gained weight. I've gained 15 kilograms uh, since I've started this medication. Yeah, so that can be due to clozapine as well. And that collectively having increased weight, having high blood sugar or high blood lipids, all of that can be metabolic syndrome. Have you heard about this before? No, what is this metabolic syndrome? So it's mainly a term to, to recognize side effect of clozapine. And it's the, um, just, it means... The, the risk factors on sugar levels and the lipid levels and weight uh, as well, and how that can affect, can store up for some serious problems in the future. Would you like to discuss some of the management? Well, uh, is it a serious doctor, that, uh, this metabolic syndrome? So it can be serious, but the good thing that we cut it up early and we can work it right now to close monitor for it just to prevent any complications or any serious side effects in the future. So what could be the cause of this metabolic syndrome, doctor? 
So one of the known causes that clozapine can cause the metabolic syndrome, it can increase the appetite, it can increase um, the, abnormal, the abnormal sugar or lipid in the blood as well. So okay. that's why we need to address, yeah, we need to do close monitoring and I can refer you to a GP for monitoring. Um, also blood pressure is very important to monitor as if it was high, we need to take repeated blood pressure to diagnose for high blood pressure and start on medication if needed. I Are you following it. me so far? Yes, yes, yes. Probably. Yeah. So that's, remaining. so that's one thing to refer to GP. We can also refer to a dietitian for some personalized diet and physical healthy, um, healthy physical activities as well. And there are in the future, there are other alternatives, maybe adding another medication to clozapine to counteract the side effect or if the measures didn't really work, we should stop clozapine. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't want to stop clozapine. So that's really the last resort. And uh, we are here to support you. Uh, and we are here to, to, have prior, to have the balance between your mental health and physical health as well. I know that's a lot of information to take on one go. I can give you some written information and we can have any other time to discuss about it. Is there any questions so far? No, oh, thank you. No, thank you, Robin, for discussing with me today one of the side effects for clozapine and discussing metabolic syndrome and how okay. we can manage. <laughs> how do you feel about what you did? Give her a feedback. Uh, Let's all help each other. Give a feedback for our colleagues. How do you feel about what you did? I felt that I was repeating a lot of things, but I mainly yeah. mentioned mentioned the structures that I have. Oh, I didn't mention about smoking, that one important thing. Very clever. Dr. Ahmed Fawzi is giving you the core of your mistake. Very clever feedback. You didn't ask about his lifestyle and dietary habits and history of medical and family, which is very important. Uh, and didn't ask about the risk. We said all, also put the risk in our in your uh, in your mind. Always show that you are a safe practitioner. Very good feedback. Pay always pay attention to the feedback of your colleagues. They are or when when you reach this level of your career, all of you are clever. So <laughs> let's let me see. So uh, when I said. I asked you in the very first, very first beginning, explain for me the results, but instead of explaining the results, you want you, you went through the clozapine history. Since when are you taking the clozapine? I ask you a question, please address it. All, put this always in your mind when you are doing the task. Answer the question of the role player and then sign post. You can say something in terms of, your blood sugar level is high, as well as the high blood cholesterol, uh, et cetera. Uh, but I would like to ask some questions about the clozapine. So this is how we do it. If you want to know some quest some information about the clozapine, address my question or address my concern, then ask whatever you want to ask, okay? Okay. Um, and then I don't know why they didn't you ex explain the lab results as one chunk. You took the blood mm -hmm. sugar level and explained it in depth that it will cause high blood sugar level, diabetes, and the complications of the diabetes. As one chunk, explain the results and then explain the complications of the metabolic syndrome. Not every one uh, blood sugar or one result and all its complications then go through the other results and all its, its complications of explain the results as one chunk and then explain the complications as one chunk. Your explanation of the metabolic syndrome can be better. Uh, adding another medication, you did not talk about that. Uh, just verbalize the aripiprazole. You did not talk about the change in the lifestyle. You did not talk about the uh, formula stuff. Having said this, can you formulate, please, for me, this station? So I tried to formulate, uh, so I can understand that you're here today to discuss about 
the side effects of, of the medication that you take, clozapine. We discussed about metabolic syndrome, its effect on the blood sugars le level, levels and um, weight gain, and how to monitor that closely and follow up by referring to GP and dietitian okay. and uh, other alternative okay. measures as well. Okay, okay, okay. So just have a look at this plan. This is the S-bar technique, but it's more simple way to understand. All what you need to talk about is not more than two lines. The first line is, what is the main psychological problem? He's having schizophrenia on clozapine, and he's having, suffering from metabolic syndrome. Okay, and there is, could be a potential risk on his health because of this. Okay, so this is the main psychological problem, and this is the level of risk. All this in the background that he has resistance schizophrenia. Um, he is, might be having, which you didn't ask. You need to know more information to have a complete formulation. That's why you should have asked about the lifestyle. Okay, maybe he always in the background that he have a sedentary lifestyle, the background that he have history of, of past family history of uh, heart problems, something like this. So you need to gather some information in order to make your formulation clear and complete. We don't formulate before gathering the information. This is the management plan, the PDF, the um, first thing you introduce yourself. Number two, either you gather the relevant uh, information and check the risk, and then explain, or you start by the explanation and then gather the information and check the risk. You can either start by explanation after introduction or gathering the information, but always, always check the risk. And after gathering the information, you do your formulation and then you do the management plan. Is it clear, doctor? It is very simple. It needs iteration in order to make sure that you will cover all these points and every point is the foundation of the next one. How is that? First thing, you introduce yourself. You gather the relevant information and this information which will, will help you later on to do your formulation. And after setting the formulation, you can do your management plan because the formulation is the foundation of the management plan. Okay? With time, what I'm saying will be more clear and clear. Those who have watched the explanation or the management plan will have this concept or this approach more clear. So again, you introduce yourself, you gather the relevant information, you ask about the risk, you do the explanation, do the formulation, and then talk about the management plan. Okay? So let's see according to our PDF. So this is the PDF. As we said, introduce yourself, then you explain, you gather the biopsychosocial information and risk, you do your formulation and eventually the management. This, you only have seven minutes and you must cover all this. So you must be very organized. And I know that what I'm saying can be a bit complicated, but the management task is difficult, it's not easy. And it needs very concentration and hard work to move, to make yourself more presentable and to be able to pass the morning tasks, not less than five management stations in the morning. So I think this is the most difficult task. So bear with me and with time you will understand what I'm talking about. So your introduction was good. Then you explain what the results of the blood test is, okay, high blood sugar level, etc. What could be the reason for this? It is a metabolic syndrome. And here, the first mistake, you did not explain the metabolic syndrome in a very good way. It is a disturbance in the metabolism of the body, which causes the changes in the blood chemistry, like high blood sugar level and increased blood lipids. Also, there is a change. Also, uh, there is a change in the energy consumption. There is a change. 
in energy consumption, which causes increased weight. Okay. And increased weight circumference and increased blood pressure. Again, change in the metabolism of the body, and this causes changes in the blood chemistry and change in the energy consumption, and this causes increased weight, increased weight circumference and blood pressure. Okay, is it serious? You'll get this question. If it is not managed, it will cause heart problems, blood vessel problems, hypertension, high blood sugar level like diabetes. What is the cause of this metabolic syndrome? This is a very common question which you will get here. And unfortunately, most of the candidates answer it in a wrong way. They answer saying clozapine, no. Clozapine is one of the factors, there are other factors. How can you pick up the other factors? Ask about the biopsychosocial information, okay? You must ask like what you, your colleague have just said. Ask about the typical day of his life, any physical activities, if he is eating healthy, okay? Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? Do you use any street drugs? Because all of these are factors that all these factors can cause metabolic syndrome even without taking clozapine, okay? You can ask a couple of questions about the clozapine, whether he's taking it regularly and if it is helping him or no, and then eventually ask him about the level of risk. Very important about this. Because there is a point for the risk assessment in all the stations, not only the management, even the risk and also the mental state examination. Uh, even the history taking and the mental state examination. Always show that you are a safe practitioner. Now, you will, he will be asked, you will be asked, so how can you help me? How can we sort out this metabolic syndrome? Here you can set the formulation. The best place to set your formulation is immediately before the management plan. We have talked about the formulation, okay? So I'm not going to go through it again. Now the management. The first thing, what are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? Always make it a very systematized and fixed approach plan in order to make sure that you will cover the management points because you are going to talk about the management points maybe in the last one and a half minutes. So you must be very organized in order not to miss anything and also to be organized and fluid. First point, where are you going to what are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated is going to be followed up in the clinic. And also you are going to address his concerns and do thorough physical and mental assessment during this follow-up. Definitely metabolic syndrome is not a patient to be admitted in psychiatric hospitals. <laughs> investigations, you need to do some further investigations to make sure that he is physically fit for physical activities or if you want to change any of his medications, also you must make sure that he's physically fit. So you want to do some blood tests like kidney functions, liver functions, and heart tracing. Okay, please pay attention to this. Don't start the patient on physical exercises without making sure that his heart is fit for this physical activity. Then talk again about the team, which will cover all his needs physically, psychologically, and socially. Don't forget this sentence because this will means that you have this holistic approach for the patient. Show the, the examiner that you understand that there are other areas in the patient's life which should be covered other than the pinpoints of his physical or the uh, pinpoint of the symptoms itself. You are going to assess the patient holistic as a person, okay? Physically, you are going to discuss his condition with the GP. Uh, psychologically, okay, it is not recommended to change the clozapine. However, if the metabolic syndrome was not controlled, we might add another medication called aripiprazole, which will help in controlling the metabolic syndrome. Okay. Then socially, this is the most important point. The most important point is the change in the lifestyle. Okay, so as you can see, the backbone of the treatment is the healthy, life, healthy lifestyle. We can help you to join a subsidized gym, and it will also be helpful to book an appointment with a dietitian. 
How do you feel about having an appointment with alcohol and some mystery services? This is in case if he talked about talking, if he talked about alcohol uh, or misuse or any substance misuse. So this is a question. Uh, this question uh, depends upon his answer when you ask him if he is taking any substances or any uh, uh, recreational medications, and eventually terminate the station. Uh, I understand that what I'm saying can be a bit complicated um, for those who are new for the cost, for those who are experienced in the cost, they will find it more palatable. But bear with me, there are not less than 40 management stations. We'll go through all of them. And inshallah, by the end of our uh, these uh, 40 stations, you will understand that approach. Let's see the mark sheet again, not to see who will pass or fail, just to make sure that to understand how you're going to be assessed. Unfortunately, Dr. Nora did not formulate. Uh, she identified the significance of findings. She explained the results in well, uh, in a good manner. But the management plan was very defective. She did not talk about it. It was very defective. Um, does not pay sufficient to the, to the patient's health view. So I think you shared me in the conversation. It was good does not develop adequate risk management. You did not talk about the risk at all. The psychological and social, you did not talk about the social interventions. It was not very uh, structured. It was not very formalic. No, it was formalic. Everything was good, but it was not very uh, structured regarding the communication. Okay, so I hope that you found it helpful. I know that what I'm saying can be a bit difficult to grasp, but with time, you'll understand it. What is the risk here? The clozapine risk? Yes, ask if he ask him if he has any thoughts of harming himself, any thoughts of uh, that's it. Just ask about this. Show that you are a safe practitioner and the risk is in the back of your mind. So any thoughts of harming yourself, any thoughts of harming anyone else, any concerns about your safety, make it an open-ended question. So who would like thank you so much, Dr. Nora. So uh, who would like to go next? Dr. Nidisha? Can I go next? Yes, so what is your yeah. station? Anorexia. Okay, anorexia. You have two minutes, write down your notes, arrange your thoughts.
You ready? Yeah, ready. One, two, three, go. Let me my name is Michael. Hello. Michael. Okay. Hello, Michael. I am Hello. Dr. Nidisha. Uh, as you know, one of the psychiatrists here. Uh, um, I understand that you want to know, uh, know more about the patient in our ward. So, uh, yes, doctor. I, I am very glad to know that. Yes, doctor. I am very I glad want... to know that you are so interested in. What did you say? Uh, I am very glad to know that you are so interested in your psychiatry rotation and you want to know more about the patient. So what is your understanding of the condition of the patient? Well, uh, I don't know more about the condition of Emily, but I'm wondering why is she losing a lot of weight? Um, she is refusing to eat. Uh, I, don't, I think she is, she is dieting too much. I want to know, uh, to understand his health condition. Yeah, so um, I, I just took a round from the ward and uh, what I uh, got information from Amelia is that uh, she has been uh, voluntarily uh, trying to uh, restrict her dietary intake so as to achieve an ideal uh, body weight. And uh, she, she is doing uh, these things because uh, she, she might be suffering from what we call as uh, anorexia nervosa. Have you ever heard of this condition? No. What is what is anorexia nervosa? Yeah. So so it's a, a psychiatric uh, disorder in which a patient voluntarily tries to restrict food intake, like by um, using appetite sup suppressants. Uh, they can also try to induce vomiting by themselves. They might increase the uh, exercise and physical activity. So uh, we, we diagnose this condition when uh, the body weight is less than 15% of the expected weight. Also, uh, when, uh, like, like I said, when they uh, do some things in order to reduce their weight, and um, if, if they have some, uh, if it is a female, if they have some uh, menstrual disturbances. So, so all these uh, symptoms are necessary in order to make the diagnosis. Am I clear so far? Uh, uh, well, doctor, is it a common disorder? Yeah, yeah, it is uh, prevalent in young females around 15 to 19 years of age. Yeah. Oh, okay, doctor. So, uh, any, what, any are, more questions you want to ask? what are the causes of anorexia? Yeah, so. Uh, there can be multiple factors leading to uh, this condition and which can predispose to uh, in and increase the risk of developing uh, anorexia. So like in Emilia's case, her sister is also having eating disorder. So if there is a family history of eating disorder, then there is an increased chance of having uh, uh, eating disorder like anorexia nervosa. Also, there can be some psychological uh, problems like uh, in Emilia's case, she, she is having a perfectionist uh, personality. So uh, it can also be a predisposing factor. Also, there can be some uh, issues with the family, like if there are uh, conflicts in the family, some disturbed family relationships, they can also uh, predispose to this condition. And, uh, and some chemical imbalance in the brain can also uh, predispose, like some serotonin changes in the brain. I see. So is it a serious disorder? Yeah, it, it can be. It can be a serious disorder if uh, the patient is not taking a food, food for a long time. He, uh, he or she can become emaciated. There can be metabolic disturbances, electrolyte disturbances, and many more complications can uh, happen if not treated uh, early. So what are the complications of anorexia? Yeah, like uh, they, there can be uh, electrolyte disturbances, there, there can be uh, metabolic uh, disorders, and uh, it, it can affect uh, all the organs of the body if, if the patient is uh, fasting from a long time and is severely starved and uh, not eating the food. Uh, are so, you able to understand well, what we're going to say? Is she going to get better? 
yeah uh, as emilia reported uh, to us early in the uh, condition and uh, she she is uh, currently 15 years old only and uh, uh, she she doesn't have so much uh, uh, reduced weight so uh, with treatment she can improve but but some patients don't improve and we we will have to look for how she uh, gets well with the treatment Hey, doctor. So, how can we help her, doctor? Yeah. So, so uh, for anorexia nervosa, like uh, in Emilia's case, as her weight uh, is not that much reduced and she's not that much emaciated, we can uh, treat her on OPD basis, outpatient basis, and um, we will have to do uh, involve a multidisciplinary team. We we can refer her to a dietitian so that. Um, they can tell her, her about how can she take the fish because uh, there is something called refeeding syndrome which can occur if she uh, takes the fish rapidly okay and uh, uh, we, we can also remaining. involve the psych okay uh, we can also involve the psychologist okay so that uh, some psychotherapies like cognitive behavioral therapy interpersonal therapy can be given to emilia also if there are some family conflicts then we can involve her family in the treatment and we can uh, give her family therapy i see uh, okay uh, do do you have any other questions no no thanks okay thanks for uh, coming to me and talking to me uh, mr michael and um, it it was nice speaking to you and you can come to me again whenever you have any concerns and uh, if you want to know more about the patients on the ward okay thank you thank you how do you feel about what you did give me your own feedback give me your feedback give her I, a feedback I doctor in my the chat section what yeah what, what what is your feedback about what you did i don't know whether i was able to communicate well like because last time uh, as well i had difficulties so. okay so nobody gave you any uh, any feedback so let's see my feedback so uh, i'm very glad that you are interested in the uh, well, just you are wasting time don't do something out of the task you only have 7 minutes and you are not going to be scored for it I'm very glad that you are interested in the psychiatric rotation and so on. This is out of the context. You will not be scored for it. Explanation of the diagnosis, you missed the most important point in which there is distortion of body image. This is the core of the anorexia or any eating disorder, the body image. Her body image in her mind is totally distorted and it is not changed by any effects that her weight is increased or decreased. It will be always distorted. Now, there are important statistical figures which you must know in this station. When I ask you, is it, is it common or not common? You must know the figures of the anorexia or eating disorder, in anorexia in particular among the females and males, which we'll go through on later on. You said serotonin syndrome or serotonin medical. This is a jargon. Just say some chemical compounds and it's enough. When I talked about the, asked you about the complications, anorexia has a lot of complications. You didn't mention, I think, well, less than half of them. When I ask you, is she going to get better again? This is a question about the prognostic factors which you should know. Uh, we did not formulate. I don't want to frustrate all of you, but the management task is a very loaded and difficult task. So bear with me in order to make sure that you will pass the, the five morning stations, maybe the six morning stations over the management station. So having said this, can you formulate for me what uh, this station is about? Can you formulate the condition of Emily, please? Yeah, from whatever information I gathered, uh, it, it seems to me that uh, Emilia might be suffering from uh, anorexia nervosa with uh, minimal risk and uh, with a uh, background of uh, having a family history of uh, eating disorder. 
and um, also having some uh, personality traits of uh, perfectionism. How did you know? Did you ask? How did you know? Uh, it, it was why why are you talking candidate. about something which is not there? What? It, it was there in the candidate instructions. Okay. Okay, so let's again, let's see how do we formulate. The main thing is just you must talk about what is the main psychological problem here, Dr. Nidisha, and what is the level of risk? So this is the first line of your formulation. What is the main psychological problem? Hello? Anorexia. Anorexia nervosa. Okay, is that uh, Emily or uh, has anorexia nervosa and there is high risk on her if it is not managed properly, okay? This is the first line, very simple. All this in the background, okay, of what? What are the information which you know or you need to know about this patient? Okay, you need, we need to know more about her social uh, background. We need to know more about her psychological condition. Okay, because we all, and she is a perfectionistic person and physically she has been already assessed. So there are information which you know and there are information which you need to know. This is the background, there are areas which you know and there are areas which you don't know. And this is going to be reflected on your management plan because what you know you are going to correct, what you don't know you are going to check and correct if it is there. Is it clear, doctor? So can you formulate for me again the station? So what is the main situation and what is the background, please? Go ahead, Dr. Nidisha. Formulate, please. Yeah. Um, uh, so to recap what uh, we uh, have said so far, so uh, Ms. Emilia has anorexia nervosa and there is a high risk of uh, uh, having some complications if uh, she is not treated early and um, there is also a background uh, history of uh, having some uh, personality traits of perfectionism yes uh, she has physical she is physically not controlled she needs a physical intervention and we need to know more about her psychological and social uh, background okay all these are the, this is the background the information which you know or you need to know uh, all this can come uh, under the heading of uh doctors please mute your mics all this can come under the heading of background is it okay okay, okay. yes let's see the feedback some of our colleagues gave you a feedback Nidia is somehow anxious yes You were a bit anxious during your performance. Yes, Dr. Yudai, it's very clear. So let's see our... Uh, again, I will go rapidly through our management plan to just to make it clear in all of your mind how to, uh, to approach a station with management. First thing, introduce yourself. Second point, you gather the relevant information or you start by the explanation, but let's say that for the sake of explanation of the task, we will start by gathering the, after introduction, you gather the relevant information, check the risk, explain the diagnosis, formulate, and then talk oh. about the management plan. Please, doctors, yeah, please your mic. Okay, so. So these are the six points of the management which you should uh, cover during your management plan. Let's see according to the PDF, the anorexia. Okay, the management plan, you introduce yourself and uh, the, the, this is a, a student nurse, so he doesn't know anything about the patient. So there is no place here to gather information. So what the most probably will start by explanation after introducing yourself. So what is wrong with Miss X? You are going to say that she has anorexia and explain what is the anorexia. And don't forget that it is mainly 
distortion of the body image. Don't forget this main point. Okay. This is the main point. Weight loss is, uh, is self induced, it is 15% below the normal, but it is mainly because distortion of her uh, body image. Okay. Now you need to understand uh, or to have or just to study by heart important figures regarding anorexia because it is an important disorder in the in the cask. Okay. When I ask you, is it a common disorder? Talk about that it is nearly one every 100 females, and among males, it is nearly one every 350 men. Okay. What are the causes of anorexia? This is also a question which definitely will be asked here. So there are familial factors like having family members, there are psychological factors like having a perfectionistic personality. Factors in the childhood like chronic childhood illness and bullying because of the body weight, and also brain chemicals and social praising of thinness play a role. The first three points are the main points, the family factors, the psychological factors, and the childhood. Is it a serious disorder? Again, there are some figures which you should study by heart. It is a very serious disorder because if it is not managed properly, 50%, uh, if it is not managed properly, 5%, uh, the mortality can be up to 5%. The all, an all course, 50% will recover, 30% will partially recover, and 20% will have a chronic course, and 5%, unfortunately, will, have a, will be the mortality rate. Don't forget these figures, doctors, the figures of the prevalence and the figures of the complications, okay? What are the complications of anorexia? A lot of complications, I will not go through them. Uh, and the bones, the fertility, sex, everything is affected by anorexia. Is she going to get better? Again, this is a question related to the prognostic factors and it is a standard answer please don't forget it is a standard answer all what you are going to change is a very is a very descent the first sentence there are some factors which uh, there are no factors which favor the good outcome of anorexia factors which favor the good outcome of hypochondriasis whatever the disorder is you are going to change this word and the anorexia or hypochondriasis or whatever the word is. And then the same sentence will be followed. Early engagement of the treatment, absence of positive psychiatric disorder, good functioning, good coping, family support, absence of stresses and medical disorders, all these are, are the factors which go, favor the good outcome. Don't say prognostic factors, it can be considered as a uh, jargon, okay? How can we help her? Before going through helping her, talk about the formulation because it is the foundation of your management. And then talk about the management, where she's going to be treated and what are you going to do? This is the first point, as we said, you're going to see her again. She is going to be treated in the clinic. However, if there is high risk, don't forget this. Anorexia basically is treated at home, but if there is high risk, the admission in the hospital can be considered and it is not uncommon that the patients who have anorexia to be admitted for whether physical or psychological reasons, very common for them to be admitted in the hospitals, okay? And then after talking about what are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated, you talk about the investigations. As you can see, the same sequence of the points for every station in the management. Point number one, where the patient is going to be treated, what am I going to do? Point number two, the investigations. Point number three, the team, the team which will cover all her needs physically, psychologically, and social. No, physically, definitely you must talk about the physical because she, she has been referred by the GP and there has been some sort of physical problems. You must communicate with the physician and the, and the GP and the dietitian to make sure that 
hair weight is increased according to a plan from 0.5 to 1 kilogram every week. Psychologically, the backbone of the treatment is the psychological treatment, and you must talk about the different types which are suitable for this disorder, like the CBT and the cognitive analytic psychotherapy. And you must mention that it is a lengthy psychotherapy. It can be, it can be, it can last up to 12 months. Okay. The social. Socially is very important also because family intervention is very important, family psychological psychoeducation and support. And sometimes family therapy can be uh, important in the uh, management of the anorexia nervosa. And eventually termination, I will share with you some details. Um, this will be the last time to go through the mark sheet to make sure that it will be not a, uh, this session will not last long. Okay, so unfortunately, Dr. Nadisha did not formulate uh, properly, does not for the results, you paid attention to the results that she is uh, losing weight and the information given to, given to you in the Ken notes you paid attention to. Unfortunately, the management plan was not very good. Uh, you did not talk about your, with your patient to explain for her, her diagnosis, so you use point number four. Risk management, you did not talk about the risk. Uh, enough. And uh, how can we talk about the risk when you say that if there is a risk, we might consider admission of the patient. Okay, it is not enough to talk about the risk when I ask you what if, if, if there is if there are complications. Now I've talked about the risk. Now, how are you going to manage the risk? I will follow her up at home. And if there are any risk issues, the admission in the hospital can be considered. This is how you score for yourself the risk point. Uh, does not identify psychological, unfortunately also the psychological and social interventions were not enough. Um, now the communication, you were a bit non-fluent and disorganized. Other than this, everything was okay in your communications. Okay, so I hope that you found it helpful. Don't be frustrated from your assessment. Uh, the management task is difficult. I hope that you focus on it and practice it as soon as you finish this session. The, uh, the, 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 um, the scoring and the results of the management seat is the least among all the stations. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. So who would like to follow Dr. Nidisha? I would like to follow. Let me go <laughs> Three, <laughs> so just, uh, I want one. <laughs> Who would like to do? I would like to do. Okay, Dr. Tiger. Is it your name, Dr. Tiger? Yes, sir. Okay, nice name, Dr. Tiger. So what is your station dear? Elderly Mania, management station. So you Dr. Charles, yeah. <coughs> elderly Mania, let's see where is the elderly Mania. Yeah, very good. Santosh will take the station of Dr. Ahmed Swailam. So, okay, no problem, Dr. Santosh.
Ready? Okay, take two minutes more, just be ready. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. I'll start the timer. Let's say that my name is um, Michael. I'm the son of uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Okay. White, let's choose another color. Mr. Brown. Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. White. Michael or Brown? No, no. Uh, we, we have used Brown before just. Okay, so now Mr. Michael, okay. I'm Michael, my father is Mr. White. One, two, three, go. Good afternoon. Um, are, are you Mr. Michael? Yes, I am uh, Michael. You can call me Michael. Okay, my name is Dr. Stanley. I'm one of the doctors in this mental health clinic. I understand that um, you're worried about uh, the strange behavior of your dad since last two weeks. Is it okay if we have a chat? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 doctor, doctor, my father has totally changed, and, and we are all worried about him. He has been always a very respectable, you know, and very cautious man. And consider it now, he's doing horrible thing, uh, things, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's going on. Okay, uh, I, I understand that this is quite distressing to you, um, but we'll do everything within our comfort world of the managing team to see the best to support you and your family and also your dad. Uh, could you tell me uh, what exactly do you, do you understand about your the last pro problems? Well, when he has changed, he's talking too much. He is doing, you know, totally irrelevant and irrational things, spending too much money. And, uh, oh, and lastly, you know, he is driving fast. We took the car keys from him. Now he's driving the tractor fast in the streets. Um, and, and we think that this can be very dangerous for him and everyone. That's why we brought him here. Okay. Okay. So, and all this has, has been on for the past two weeks? Yes, yes. Okay. Would you say he's been progressive or, or has it got better along the line? Uh, well, it has been deteriorating with time. and. Uh, we don't know how to control him. He doesn't listen. Okay. All right, Mr. Michael. Is it okay if I ask you some other questions to be sure of what we're dealing with? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, uh, have your father been sleeping all this while? He's, just, he's now sleeping maybe one or two hours maximum, not more. Okay, and uh, if he doesn't sleep, does he feel tired in any way? Or... No, no, no. I feel that he is always on the go. He has a lot of energy, man. I, I cannot cope with him. Okay, you also said something about your dad spending money uh, recklessly these days. Does he feel uh, a kind of more importance than he used to be before? Yes, he feels that he is very important and he is uh, a member of the royal family and you know, totally nonsense, man. I don't know what's happening with him. Okay. Is it the first time uh, this is happening to him? Yes, this is the first time. I is he having any other physical problems? No, no. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael. Um, I, I think your dad is having uh, what we call a acute manic uh, episode with uh, other issues going by what you just explained to me. Have you what heard that it? before? No, what is a manic episode, doctor? Okay, um, it's, it's a form of, uh, a form of, um, it's a severe mental health problem that is associated with uh, uh, mood swings, severe mood swings, where uh, a kind of what we call bipolar uh, affective disorder. Uh, this is the, the manic side is when someone gets so energetic and doesn't have any need to sleep. And uh, like it's happening with your dad. So um, this is exactly what, uh, what we are able to find out. Is See, that okay? 
Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Okay. Do you have any other question, Mr. Michael? So what could be the reason for this stop? Okay. Um, thank you for that question, Mr. Michael. I think uh, there are so many uh, reasons, but uh, actually we don't, uh, the main cause of acute manic disorder is not, uh, it's not known, but uh, there are genetic causes to it where uh, you know, there are family people and that already had it in the family, it runs in the family somehow. And also, there are also uh, other issues in, the, in someone's life, especially when someone is having uh, other treatment for another medication, maybe antidepressant, and the person will all, all definitely now tilt to another side of it. Uh, other medication that can also cause it may, may could be uh, steroids and uh, maybe substance use, but I don't think these are issues on your diet. I see, I see. So uh, could be a, could it be a, an acute confusion, doctor? Oh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, we are, we have we've talked about that, but the results that uh, your dad uh, got from the GP and the ones we were able to carry it out have not shown that your dad has any problem. So I don't think uh, he's having acute, uh, acute confusional states, okay? I see, doctor. So, uh, 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 well, can I sign a consent on his behalf to admit him? I know that he is not going to accept the admission. Well, um, actually, um, going by the severity of the problem your dad presented with, and also the risky concern that you raised about spending money recklessly, uh, I think he will be better treated in the hospital, which is de uh, definitely... He, he, from... will, he will not accept the stay, the stay on the hostel, I know, doctor. So can I sign a consent? Okay, um, we, we, like, we will likely admit him uh, against his wish using the Mental Health Act. And uh, with this act, I don't think um, your consent is necessary. We will likely admit him in his best interest. So you don't need to sign any consent, Mr. Michael. Oh, I see. I see. So yeah. how are you going to help him? Okay. Um, actually, we will we'll, we'll start from remaining. admitting him. Then we're also going to uh, do some uh, um, investigation to check how his body is. We'll check his liver and the kidney because some of the medications will pass through the kidney to get out of the body. We'll also check um, his um, the thyroid and also the heart tracing. Then after that, then we'll, we'll likely give him some medications, uh, like uh, we'll, we'll give him a lithium and probably antipsychotics. Okay. Then we'll also uh, be looking at uh, talking therapy, where we're going to look uh, uh, get him to understand the illness uh, very well and uh, how to cope with the symptoms going forward. Then when we discharge him, we'll collaborate with the social care services for the best, uh, how to integrate, integrate him back to his business. Do you understand that, Mr. Michael? Okay, yeah. Okay, do you have any other question for me? No, no, thank you. Okay, I, I know this information may be too much for you in the go, but uh, we we'll always here if you have any other clarification Sorry. to come Sorry. around. Sorry. Thank you very much. How do you feel about what you did? <sighs> <laughs> I know that it is a difficult task, so, but so let's all help help each other. And let's see the feedback of our colleagues while getting the information. He can ask about medication. So check the dress. Very good. Check our drug and use. Better if he addressed the person the right of signing in behalf. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good feedback. My interest data is about to finish. Uh, they not my interest. Internet, that is what I don't have. Can I do my... Oh, yeah, do, definitely, doctor. You will do the station after that. Okay, so let's see our feedback again. I, I'm not going to go through the management uh, explanation. Please have a look at it. Well, just for the sake of time, you can have a look, detailed explanation in on my YouTube. I have shared the uh, YouTube link in our group, okay? okay? So let's see the elderly mania management. So you introduce yourself and you did a very good introduction and you showed empathy. But in the beginning, please, there is, you know, a very 
slight distinction between gathering information as if you are in history taking stations and the information which you need to gather in the management station. So we know that this man is already medically cleared. So you need to know more about his psychological condition. Okay. We know so far that there is no underlying medical condition, but I'm wondering, is the first time for him to be in contact with the psychiatric services? You don't need to go through the symptomatology of the mania. It is already given to you. Don't waste your time to gather information to establish the diagnosis. He is already given information, already given to you, which emphasize that he has been through going through a manic episode. So you need just to make sure that it is the first time for him to be in contact with psychiatric services and ask him about the orientation to the places and persons. In particular, this question is important. Why is that? Because as you can see here in the uh, in, 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 in the, uh, the role player knows he's going to ask you about the confusion. Pay attention to this. In this station, the role player is going to ask you about the confusion and you will not address the answer except if you have a feedback or have a knowledge about his orientation. So when I ask you about whether it is an acute confusion or no, simply say as long as he is oriented to the person and place this is not considered as a confusion mistake simple as this how do we know that he is oriented to the person and place by asking him about this information in the very first beginning so in the beginning when you are gathering the biopsychosocial information in the psychological area you ask about as we said his past history and ask him if he is oriented to the person and place. And another important information in under the psychological any memory problems and the use of psychological and the drugs and alcohol. This is considered also to be psychological information, okay? Are you with me, doctor? Yes, sir. Why is that? Because we know that uh, the frontal lobe dementia or the dementia in general can be presented in the very first early stages by symptoms very close to mania. And then ask about his social life, the social status, biopsychosocial, if there is any stresses around him and the risk, always ask about the risk doctor. So again, the first step after gathering after the introduction, you gather this important information, which will help you later on to set your management plan. Because if there is low risk, you don't need to admit him. So why? what you want to know is definitely the level of risk, okay? So you gather the important information in the psychological and social areas and the risk. Already, you don't need to cover the physical area because it is given to you that he is physically clear. And then you explain the mania he will ask you so what could be the reason for this now this is a an area which you should focus on there are many reasons in the elderly okay psychological process of psychiatric disorders okay a new onset of bipolar disorder the use of recreation misuse and chemical imbalance all these can be cause of the mania in according to the psychological uh, area okay there can be neurological if there is frontal type of dementia stroke and tumors in the brain head injury and epilepsy all these can cause a manic episode hormonal don't forget this doctors the elderly are very common to have thyroid problems and the thyroid problems are closely related to the uh, psychological condition of the patient Finally, medically, the medical conditions and vitamin B12 deficiency, all these can cause manic, uh, this or manic uh, phase or manic presentations. I'll give you leaflets about these conditions. Doctors, I want you, when you go to the management, show the, to the examiner that you are different from the other candidates. I know that the, the, the materials which you have in the other notes are very defective. If you go there and you present yourself with, in, in an effective way, don't expect to be a member of the Royal College. 
This is the answers which is expected from you to be a member of the Royal College. Okay, if you are going to answer casually, okay, it's up to you. But don't expect that the examiner will highly evaluate you. Okay, when someone asks you what could be the reason for this presentation, and you just give him simple, a casual answer, anyone will know it if he has just graduated from the medical school, it's up to you. But don't blame anyone except yourself if you don't have a good feedback or your name is not in the pass list. When you are asked what could be the reason of a manic presentation in an elderly patient, this is expected from you to cover the psychological, the neurological, the hormonal, and the medical conditions, okay? Could it be a confusion? As I said, you are actually have excluded the confusion because he is oriented to the person and the time and place, uh, the person. Can I sign a consent on his behalf? You answered this question, but there could be another answer. I understand your worries, but signing on his behalf is not possible. However, considering the level of risk from his mental condition, the medical team can use the Mental Health Act, which gives legal right to admit him if he refuses. Okay. Doctors, please mute your mics, please. Mute your mics. Having said this, doctor, so can you please formulate for me this, this uh, station? Formulate for me the condition of the patient, please. Okay, let's go through the formulation just to make sure that you will not do mistakes. I will share with you the formulation. Okay, so this is how you formulate. So what is the main situation now? the level of risk, the psychological problem, the level of risk, and the background, the biopsychosocial information. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, um, to formulate, uh, this is yeah. a 65 year old man that's presenting with uh, irritable mood and uh, excessive No, no, that's the psycholo what is the psychological problem? The diagnosis, the manic episode, that's it. The manic episode, yes. Yeah. Is a, your father is uh, presenting with oh, manic episodes. Manic episode, no need for uh, not, uh, unnecessary historical details uh, like the age, the details of the symptoms. He is presenting with a manic episode. And what is the level of risk? Is it high or low? Uh, it's high because. It, okay. uh, so the, is, this uh, is the first line. Is say very simple. Your father is presenting with a manic episode with very high risk level of risk. Okay. All this in the background. What are the information which you know or you need to know? Okay. Mm -hmm. All this in the background that he didn't have a previous uh, mental health problems. Okay, there is good support. The social information, there is good support around him. However, we need to know more about his psychological and physical condition, which can be behind the reasons behind this manic episode. Oh, that's it. Very simple. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's share the elderly. So this is the formulation, the management. Okay, the first thing you talk about, Dr. Charles, what Dr. Charles is going to do? I'm going to talk with Mr. White myself to explain his condition and the management plan and address his concerns. Please say this because as I have shown you that there is a point in the mark sheet for those who are keen to have a, this, the, the, the collaborative approach with the patient and pay attention to what they are concerned about and their health view. So when you say that I'm going to see my patient myself and explain his condition to him and address his concerns, definitely this point is going to be uh, scored for you. And talk about where he's going to be treated. He's going to be treated in the mental health uh, unit according to the level of uh, risk. And if he disagrees, we might consider the use of the Mental Health Act. The investigations, already he has done some investigations, but it will be helpful to do what? To do urine drug screening, heart tracing, thyroid functions. Okay, all these are very important during drug screening, heart tracing, and thyroid functions, okay? okay? Again, point number three, 
talk about the team which will cover all his needs physically psychologically and socially psychologically you start definitely by the psychological he will be observed and the medications a short course of benzodiazepine to control his behavior and prove his sleep pattern the backbone is a mood stabilizer which is suitable for his age okay you must say that because the elderly we know that there are risperidone and there is olanzapine which can be used but these medications are not the first options okay so you must show the examiner that you know that there are mood stabilizers which must be used in this condition but not all of them are suitable for his age okay talk about the use of lithium sodium valproate or quetiapine each one has its own pros and cons and i'll give you leaflets about them talk about the risperidone and olanzapine but they are not recommended in the old age and talk about the stepwise approach if there is no improvement we can use two mood stabilizer eventually if still there is no improvement we can use either clozapine or ect Okay, so this is the course of your medications, the benzodiazepines, the mood stabilizers, and what will happen if the patient did not improve. Physically, we will follow him up according with his vital functions. Okay, we must talk about the physical uh, part of the management. Okay, and socially, if when his mental state is stable and the risk is low, he will discharge, be discharged. And a nurse will follow him up at home to make sure that he's taking the medications. Also, we might set a community treatment order to make sure that he is taking his medications. Okay, so this is very important. We're not going just to discharge him. We must make sure that he's going to take his medications and a nurse will follow him up. So this is the social part of the management in order to make sure that you will score for yourself the point related to the social part of the management. And eventually say that I'll share with you some leaflet to about all what we discussed, etc. Okay. Is it clear, Dr. Charles? Thank you very much, sir. Very clear, sir. Yeah. I hope that you found it. Doctor, I know that a lot of information, it might be different from the sources which you have, but believe yes. me, the, the, the Royal Court said it clearly, they have high expectations from you. Don't have casual answers and the notes which you have are not textbooks they're just notes written by candidates pay attention to this okay thank, thank you, you so much. much okay who would like to go next can i go next okay doctor let me put it in okay do you want to mention which one that scan or hallucinations? hallucinations. Which one? Sorry, sorry. We'll start of three minutes.
have a bed in there. Just allow it there. You ready? Yes, teacher. Ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, go. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Dr. Zaina, one of the mental health doctor. How do you do? Um, how may I address you? You can call me Michael. Oh, uh, hello, Michael. How are you doing today? Well, I'm fine, but I'm very worried about my father. Uh, may I know your father's name, please? He's Mr. White. Uh, okay. So I understand that you are quite concerned about your father and you want to know more about condition and how yes. best we can help him. Yeah. So before I go ahead, do you have any specific concern that I should answer? Well, I don't know, doctor. He, he has changed a lot and, uh, you know, he's talking to himself. Am I? Uh, I, I thought I discussed this with the GP. He said I must talk with you. Mm -hmm. what so, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael, uh, what do you think? What is your understanding about your father's condition? Yes, yeah, sir. They said that he has Lewy body dementia and, and he's taking mm -hmm. his medications. Okay. Is he taking his medications regularly? Yes, yes. So, please, your voice, voice, voice. Oh. Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. he's taking yes. his medications, yes. Uh, and does he have any side effect because of any medication? Well, I don't know. Okay, okay. And I understand that he's on some medicine uh, and um, you are, uh, because you ha he has some concern recently that he is experiencing some um, vision that he's seeing something when no one is around. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, uh, so um, I would like to discuss more about how we best we can help him. But before that, can I just ask, does he have any other medical condition? Well, he, he only follows up with the uh, doctor of the neurology just to control his uh, movement because sometimes he is not able to move properly. And he has, uh, but, but, but he is now moving properly, he has changed his medications two weeks ago and everything is fine. Okay, okay. And uh, have you ever seen, uh, maybe he appears confused at times? Sometimes okay. he's confused, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And have you seen him responding to some un unseen stimuli? Maybe yeah, yeah, yes, himself? he's hallucinating, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about his support? Like, uh, is he getting well, support which he needs? Well, uh, sometimes no one is at home. I go to work. My wife goes, is, also goes to work and he's left alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it can be difficult for him. Any other stressor currently in his life? No, no, no. And Mr. Uh, Michael, uh, do you have any idea about any other safety concern at home? Well, uh, you know, sometimes he falls, doctor, and that's why we went to the neurologist in order to understand why he's falling. And he got lost, mm -hmm. doctor. He went out of the house and he was lost. He was brought yesterday by the police. And that, that's why we have decided to discuss his condition with one of your team members. Okay. So uh, he has also lost his way to home. It sounds quite concerning. Yeah. And yeah. what about like, is he, is he able to take care of himself? Well, sometimes he's not able to, like when he goes out of the house, he's not able to take care of himself, but inside the house, everything is okay. Okay. And uh, uh, can I just ask first one question, does he drink or take any street drugs? No, no, no. Okay, so Mr. Michael, just to recap that your father, Mr. White is having this uh, levy body dementia and um, he is taking, he is on medication. 
and uh, currently he is having the risk of uh, fall and uh, also uh, he has wandered away from the house and he's also seeing something which is not seen by others in the background of uh, the condition that he is having some movement disorder and uh, family support uh, there are uh, infrequent incon inconsistent family support at home yeah yes yes this is about, but i'm wondering why why he's having these hallucinations doctor so as uh, you know that he is having this condition known as levy body dementia so in which uh, there are some abnormal protein which get accumulated inside the brain and which is responsible for this uh, visual hallucination that seeing something which is not around and they also uh, have some confusion can yeah. you relate with that mr michael yes yes i understand yes yeah and can i go ahead with management yes go ahead no problem so what i would like to do is i would like to see your father mr right by myself and i would also like to do some physical examination and his mental state examination as well as uh, i would also like to do some uh, his risk assessment because he has tendency to fall and also tendency to wander away and um, we would like to treat him at home uh, and also would like to follow him up in memory clinic but if the risk is very high and uh, if his life is at risk then we have to and if there are no uh, inconsistent support at home then we have to admit him in the nursing home are you with me so far mr michael yes i see i see yes and uh, as you uh, mentioned that he has some recent, uh, worsening of his worsening of his symptoms so i would also like to do some basic blood report along with that uh, his tracing of heart and um, as he is currently on rivastigmine so we have option of increasing the dose of rivastigmine yes 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 or else uh, if uh, he is like uh, very agitated or uh, his uh, if he is agitated then we can uh, try to you know verbally uh, by talking we can calm him down but if it not if it will not work then we have some options of uh, some other medicine some like sedatives to calm him down but okay. uh, antipsychotic will not be the good best option for him because it can further decrease it can lead to some more complications so we would not go for antipsychotic okay no. any antipsychotic uh, but if at all if his condition is very severe then at very low dose with very caution we will give him some antipsychotic like quetiapine or clozapine with yes. very caution yes and we will see how he is responding to that medicine okay and apart from that i hope you have uh, the social and we will also put in touch with social support community psychiatric nurse and occupational therapist will also do home visit okay time time, time. How do, okay how do you feel about you very I good by the way i gave you Thank just you. extra few seconds but it was good you are very improve, improving very good by the way Uh, so give me your feedback about what you did before giving you my feedback give her some feedback doctors okay so uh, let's see okay i don't know whether increasing the dose of medicine will So no, let's see. The first thing is that to adjust the medications of the neurologist and uh, mm -hmm. increase the dose of uh, reversing media. So the introduction was very good. Show empathy when he expresses the difficulties of his father's condition and the difficulties he's having in taking care of him. Of course, it is very important to show this. Now, the gathering the biopsychosocial, you did it very well, but please be organized. Okay. You gather the psychological information. Uh, okay, since when did he start to have these visual? Anything happened? Establish this that the the, the uh, temporal relation between changes in the medications and uh, the, uh, the, the 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 development of the symptoms, and ask about uh, the depression and uh, so simple question about other psychological issues. particularly the confusion which you have asked about okay uh physical you must ask about his physical condition 
and the movement. Very important to ask about the movement because the patient is already on neurological medications because he has Parkinson's disease. Okay, for which he has changed the medications. And again, here you can establish the temporal relation between the symptoms and the change of the medications. Very good that you have asked about the social circumstances around the patient and the level of risk. You have asked that wonderfully. Just you don't need to go in detail just about his safety, is able to take care of himself, and does he drink alcohol? Okay, enough. Don't go through all these unnecessary uh, details of the risk. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's go. Then the explanation. Before going through the formulation, you must explain what are the problem. And this is a mistake which you did. You didn't explain. I, I'm the one who asked you what is the problem with my father. The visual hallucinations has two components here. The first, two reasons. One is the change in the medications. The other component or the other reason is that it is part of the Lewy body dementia symptomatology. This is how you answer the question. Okay. Could be there any other cause? There can be confusion, but it has been a executed by what you have just asked about. How can you help him? You ask, you formulated in a very good way, very clever. And then the management, he talked about what you are going to do. Very important to explain for the patient what is his problem. And you mentioned that there could be a possibility for him to be admitted very clear. And the investigations, very important to do the investigation to seclude any underlying med uh, medical problems and to make sure that he's going to be fit for these, uh, for any intervention you are going to do. Then there will be a team which will follow him up physically, psychologically, and socially. As you can see, the typical sequence of the management, which we have done before, what you are going to do, where he's going to be treated, the investigations, the team which will follow him up, and then talk about the physical follow-up, the psychological, and the social. Physically, you must liaise with the neurologist and the GP because the neurologist must follow up and change his medications according to his neurological condition and also according to his psychological because they are very sensitive to the neurological medications. Psychologically, the backbone is the anti-dementia. And please, when you talk about the medications, pay attention to this, please, doctor, that this patient will forget taking his medications. So you must put in your management plan a, 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 a solution for this problem. So either by the dosette box Okay, or by the patches. So you have patches and you have the Z box. Don't forget this. Don't talk about the medications for the, the uh, dementia without paying attention to the problem of his memory. Pro he will forget the medications. So you must sort it out. We have either the Z box or patches to make sure that he's taking the medications and there will be a nurse who will follow him up also to make sure that the medications are taken. Now, the social intervention is very important because there must be carer assessment. Don't forget this. There must be carer assessment to see if the patient is getting the care which is need, which he uh, which he needs in at home or no. And they can arrange the care package. Okay, a care package and carer assessment. And there is a place for occupational therapist. Okay. And you know, psychiatric nurse will follow him up. All these are social interventions. And then terminate. I'll not go through the uh, treatment sheet, the, the mark sheet again, doctors. Now, you, I think all of you know, know what, uh, how, how it goes, uh, how can you use just for the sake of time. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, very clever. You. you have improved. So, fine. good. Thank you so much. So, who would like, yes, Dr. Santosh. So what is your station? How are you? Yeah, deal be with. Deal be with. 
that that scan. Okay. Yes, sir, I can go. Okay, very clever, mashallah. Mashallah. Let's see. I will start the timer. Let's say that my name is uh, Michelle. My name is daughter, Michelle. One, two, three, go. Hello, Michelle. I'm Dr. Kumar, one of the mental health doctors. How are you doing today? Well, I'm fine, but I'm confused. Well, well, why am I talking to a psychiatrist? I thought that my father is having Parkinsonism. I've been following up with my with the neurologist. Yeah, I can understand your concerns. But uh, sometimes when people are suffering from uh, um, Parkinson's illness, and apart from that, um, some new symptoms uh, related to memory appear, uh, there we can, uh, we psychiatrists can certainly help and come in picture. And uh, I'm here to support and advise your father in the best possible way. Will that be fine if you have a couple of minutes of time? Yeah, but, but, but I've read that it is normal for those who have Parkinson's to have memory problems. So he's still having memory problems. Parkinson's, they said, no, that he doesn't have a Parkinson's disorder. Right. Uh, uh, will you mind me asking your father's name before we go, actually? His name is Mr. Uh, Gray. Mr. Gray, okay. So, Mr. Gray, uh, it seems uh, um, uh, is uh, having uh, was having was diagnosed with Parkinson's six months back, and now uh, uh, he's having memory issues uh, in last couple of months. Is that right? Yes. And apart from that, uh, we have done a, a, a new kind of scan for him called DAT scan. Taking together all these findings, it seems to me that he is having something called dementia of Levy body type. Have you heard of it? No, what is the dementia? Levy body dementia. I don't know what is it. Right. Uh, it's a it's a third commonest type of dementia. Dementia is, as you might know, is a condition where people get forgetful. And dementia of Levy body type, uh, the person uh, becomes forgetful. Apart from that, uh, um, uh, he has some movement related difficulties, has fluctuating consciousness, and uh, at times he can have some visions also, like he tends to see few things which is not seen by others. Can you relate it to your father? Yeah, yeah, this is typically what is happening to my father. But again, doctor, so what is the problem? Why is it not a Parkinson's disorder? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, regarding your question, in Parkinson's disease, uh, the uh, difficulties related to movement and memory related difficulties they occur within span of one year, whereas it is separated by at least uh, more than one year in case of, uh, uh, sorry, I uh, reversed it. Let me correct myself. So uh, the symptoms of memory and movement related difficulties, they are spaced by at least one year in case of uh, uh, dementia associated with Parkinson's disease, whereas, whereas both these difficulties, they appear within one year in case of uh, dementia of Levy body type, like I asked, uh, like I told you earlier. Is it a curable problem, doctor? Uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, I'm afraid to say that uh, um, uh, we don't have any cure for this at this moment, but please don't worry. Uh, throughout this process, we'll be, uh, we'll be with you and we'll try to uh, um, help him as much as possible. So how can you help him, doctor? Right. So uh, before answering this question of yours, will it be okay if I ask you a few questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, apart from you, who else is there at home to support him? Well, only me and my husband, and sometimes he's left alone. 
All right. Okay. That's concerning. And is he uh, having any other medical condition apart from dementia of Lewy body? No, no, no. All right. And no. uh, are there any, any any safety concerns to like, is he wandering away or he has fallen? Yes, has fallen? yes, doctor. Sometimes he falls. Sometimes he wanders outside the house. Yes. All right. That's concerning. And uh, mm, like I said, uh, just to recap things, uh, mm, uh, it seems to me that uh, he is having uh, difficulties related to memory and uh, movement related difficulties. And uh, in this background, uh, mm, uh, uh, he is having poor kind of uh, social support as most of the times both of you are uh, out and you're not able to support him. And he has some safety concerns also, like he's walking away, he's wandering away, he's falling. Uh, so uh, we have diagnosed him with uh, dementia of Lewy body type. I see, I see, doctor. So what could be the best next step, doctor? Right. So what I'll do, I'll like to see him myself and uh, do a thorough physical examination and mental state examination. Apart from that, we'll uh, like to do a few tests uh, for knowing the well-being of his physical health, like his complete blood count, his kidney function test, liver function test, his heart racing. And uh, uh, then... Uh, 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 will uh, manage a, manage him through our multidisciplinary team that we have. I see, I see, doctor. I see. So, right. so will you like to know uh, how how will we help him? Yes, yes, definitely. So, um, uh, the multidisciplinary team consisting of myself, the neurologist, uh, the GP who will take care of his physical health, the occupational therapist, community psychiatry nurse, and few carers will be involved in his care. Will you like to know their individual roles? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, before that, I'll also like to tell you that uh, home will be the most preferred place where he'll be treated because uh, uh, such of, such patients are better to be treated in safe and caring uh, environment with predictable routine where someone can help him with his uh, um, frequent uh, reorientation and uh, uh, reassurance. Are okay. you are you with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll 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 start him with a, a medication called rivastigmine, which will help him with his memory, his behavior, and activities of daily living. One minute remaining. Yeah, and uh, a neurologist colleague can help him with his movement-related difficulties. I see. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, the occupational therapist can do the environmental checks and help him with his falls that he is having. Right. Okay. And uh, a community psychiatry nurse can give more frequent visits to him and uh, remind him of taking him, him uh, the tablets. We can also provide him with some uh, dosage boxes by which he can take his medications. Okay. Very and uh, if he is not able to take uh, care of himself in good manner, some carers can be uh, uh, asked to visit him for uh, helping him with buying, cooking, and uh, cleaning, all those things. How does it sound? Very helpful, very helpful. And I understand that it's a difficult time for you and your family. Let me uh, also offer you carers assessment and uh, um, counseling if you need. Well, this would be very helpful, yes. And let me pass you on with a patient information leaflet. I know I have given you a lot of information. You can time, go through time, it. Time, 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 okay. How do you feel? I'm very clever, by the way, very much. So, how do you feel about what you did? I think initially I was fumbling a bit. And it was like, good, uh, but in the end, and the management, I felt that you were, I don't know, um, you, you, you messed a bit, uh, you were a bit disorganized at the end when you talked about, I felt because you were a bit anxious about the time, maybe, something like this, maybe. I wanted to finish the session. Yeah, yeah, but everything was good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, so... Um, well, Dr. Santos, mashallah, is very clever. And as you can see, though uh, the, the task is complicated, he was able to cover everything, nearly everything uh, in time, okay? Uh, just subtle correction in the management at the end will be enough. Um, okay, let's see the PDF. It is very close to the station 
previously, nothing different. You can copy paste everything in the previous station. Uh, first thing you introduce yourself, you explain the diagnosis. Okay. This is really about the dementia, that's good. Okay. You explain the diagnosis and explain the death scan. Okay. Just it. So how this is how you start. You explain the diagnosis and explain the death scan. That scan. She will ask you why it is not Parkinson's disorder. You explain it very well. But pay attention when you talk about dementia. Dementia is not a forgetfulness. You must you must talk explain it professionally. It is a progressive deterioration in all the brain faculties. Okay not only the memory, the language, the executive functions, et cetera, not only the memory, okay? All the brain functions are deteriorating, not only the, the most pronounced is the memory, but not only the memory. Is it common? You answered the question properly, but around 7% of the patients who are suffering from dementia, they are diagnosed with Lewy body dementia. Is it curable? Uh, you answered it correctly. Uh, but you, you, you must make it a more professional. So unfortunately, it is uh, a progressively deteriorating disorder and the lifespan from the diagnosis is between four to eight years. The medical support is primarily to decrease the rate of deterioration, to improve the quality of life, and to help the caregivers in taking care of the patient, okay? Now, how can you help him? Definitely before... Uh, talking about how you can help him. You gather the information about the patient which you need in order to understand more about his problem. So you need to know more if he has any physical problems, psychological, if he appears confused sometimes, if he is responding to unseen stimuli or taking or talking to himself. And socially, you ask about the social. And by the way, you gather the biopsychosocial information and most important is the risk. Formulation, you asked, you talked about the formulation in a very good way. Now, talking about the management, please be organized in order not to put yourself, Dr. Santos, you are very clever. And I understand that you felt that there is about one and a half minute at the end of the station, and you want to talk about everything, and eventually you were disorganized and you didn't cover what you want to say in a good way. So the first thing you must talk about is what are you going to do? Doc, what Dr. Santos is going to do? I'm going to see Mr. White myself or Mr. Gray myself to explain to him his condition, okay, and address his concerns, do physical and mental state assessment as well as risk assessment. Where he's going to be treated, this is the first thing also which you are going to talk about, he's going to be treated at home, basically. However, with is high risk, we can consider admission in the hospital. So this is the first thing which you should talk about. Number two, the investigations. As long as you are going to do to give the patient medications, you must talk about the investigations. Number three, the physical. Here, the physical, you must liaise with the GP and also the, uh, the, the neurologist because the patient is very sensitive to the medications and he has com medical complications like a disturbed blood pressure and so on, and at the same time, movement problems. So you must liaise with the GP and the neurologist. Psychologically, he will be followed up in the memory clinic and he will be given the medications uh, related to the, uh, this problem, okay? No, sorry, I, I missed here talking about the medications. I will add it later on in the PDF. Socially, as you said, the caregiver, uh, the social services will assess the caregiver and so on, and the occupation therapist will make sure that the home is safe for him eventually termination. Okay. I hope that you found it helpful. I will not go through the explanation of the uh, task and, and uh, the mark sheet uh, just for the sake of time. Okay, thank you so much. Very clever, mashallah. Thank, thank you. Who would like to go next? I, can I go next, Dr. Hassan? Yeah, if someone is talking about the caregiver burden, we talked about the social services which will uh, assess the caregivers and a, whether the, he, there will be a care package or the patient will need to be set in a suitable environment. 
okay. Okay, so Can what I go is your station? Yeah, so what is your station though? Um, it's um, treatment resistant depression, planning to get pregnant, um, on lithium and floxetin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Okay, you will have two minutes. Write down your nose and angel thoughts. Um, I, I I cannot see yours. I cannot see your screen. You cannot see my screen. Oh yeah, now. Okay, okay can you see? Just it now, now? Okay. okay. Ready? Ready? Um, yes, that's awesome. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Hello, I'm Dr. Bella, one of the psychiatrists for the Mental Health Unit. Uh, thank you for coming today. Before that, may I know what, how should I address you? Uh, you can call me Michael. All right. um, thank you, Michael, for coming today. I understand that you come here today because you have some concern um, and you want to discuss regarding your wife. Is that right? Yes, doctor. She has been suffering from depression for five years. Uh, she's now stable. She's taking fluoxetine and lithium. But uh, we need to start our family and have babies. But the doctors have warned us. Um, uh, but I want to know what our, our chances. She is totally controlled now. All right. I can see that um, I understand that you and your spouse and your wife uh, is currently um, keen to start a family. Yeah. But before that, can I ask you a few questions and maybe after this, the, the discussion will be led by you. Is that all right? Okay, no problem. 
right. May, may I know how, she, how she's doing now? We, you mentioned that she's on lithium and she's on... She's Lots totally she's controlled. She has been controlled now and doing totally fine on the medications for five years now. Okay. Any um, recent symptoms of uh, relapse of the, her depression? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. uh, may I know, is she compliant to the medications that's prescribed? Taking it regularly, she is very and, and following up with the psychiatrist regularly. All right, that, that's very good to hear that. Yeah. Um, well, uh, before that, can I know? Um, is there anyone had discussed with you before uh, regarding the issue pertaining to the use of lithium uh, well, during pregnancy? Well, this yes, yes, but this was about five years ago. I don't remember anything, doctor. Then I admit. All right. Okay. Okay, so basically, um, uh, then you are really concerned about your wife's condition as well as you're really um, looking forward to have children in the future, yeah? Um, I'm sorry to inform you that uh, the use of uh, mood stabilizers, including lithium in pregnancy, are generally contraindicated because it can cause uh, some birth defect to the unborn baby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, what what are was... these books? Like one doctor. All right. So basically, the the um, birth defect uh, that is usually associated with the use of lithium in pregnancy uh, would include um, a lot of um, birth uh, defects, uh, but uh, one particular. Um, uh, birth defect that uh, we are uh, particularly worried is one of heart defects that is called Epstein anomaly. Yeah, yeah. and I would like to inform you the general um, risk of uh, any babies of having birth defect, even like three in every hundred babies, even when the mother is not on any medication during pregnancy, and in patients uh, who are. Uh, using lithium during pregnancy, the chance of the baby of having the birth defect is about 1 in 10. And about the absent anomaly that I mentioned before, the risk is quite low, it's about 1 in 1,000 babies. But however, although the risk is low, we'd like to avoid it if possible during the pregnancy. Is that clear so far, Mr. Yeah, Michael? Yeah. Yes, yes, doctor. Any, any other problems which can be there from the medications and from their condition, doctor? If she gets pregnant. All right. So, all right. Sometimes uh, when the patient is on lithium, uh, the thyroid gland, which is one of the gland uh, located in our neck area, also can be underactive. And sometimes in mother who has underactive thyroid glands, the baby also can have um, enlargement of the thyroid seat. Yeah. Um, and sometimes lithium also can cause the baby to have weakness in muscle tone, and it also can have, uh, um, can um, affect the baby sometimes in terms of their respiratory problems as well as uh, their feeding problems after delivery. So, well, uh, can, can she breastfeed the baby, doctor? All right. Um, um, have you discussed with your wife regarding this? Uh, did she um, opted to breastfeed the baby after the delivery? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but one of our friends has <laughs> been one of our friends has been taking lithium while pregnant, and she wants to. She has a healthy child. All right. I would like to inform you that no medication is entirely safe during pregnancy, but obviously certain medication is safer compared to the other. Yeah. Um, and basically, um, um, uh, in, 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 in your wife's condition, uh, what I understand is your wife has treatment-resistant depression. She has three episodes of depression before, yeah? And uh, she is currently maintaining quite well uh, with fluoxetine and lithium, yeah? Uh, so for your wife, um, basically for the management of your wife, actually I would like to, um, uh, to um, examine your patients myself to look on her physical condition and her mental condition. And in your wife's condition, uh, basically I would suggest uh, we taper off the medications and One stop minute, it gradually. Minute. 
and stop it gradually um, uh, before she stop the contraceptive or be before she becomes pregnant. Are you clear so far, Mr. Michael? Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Well, well uh, and although, okay. okay. Yeah, and, and although we, we uh, I would like to stop the lithium gradually, I would like to continue the floxetine that your your wife is currently on because the floxetine that um she's 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 having now is uh is beneficial uh to, to help her with her depression and floxetine is very very safe throughout pregnancy and breastfeeding. Yeah. And then we okay. Will Closely monitor your wife uh, from time to time. Thank you for speaking to me. Okay, how do you feel about what you did? Time. Uh, I, I was so disorganized in the middle of the, yeah. Okay. But the biopsychosocial from what Rodina is helping you. Um, okay, so. Uh, oh yeah, one side, uh, yes, you did not chunk and check, it was more of lecture. No medication is safe in pregnancy. Very good uh, feedback, so pay attention to the feedback of your colleagues, very good feedback. Okay, so uh, it was disorganized uh, chunking and checking. I don't know, maybe because of the communication, sometimes I felt you are not answering my questions. Do you talk about the mother and baby unit? No, I didn't talk about that. Okay, so pay attention to the following. What are the medications of the patient? I hope that all of you pay attention to the trick and the mistake which all the candidates pay fall in. What are the medications which she's taking? Doctor, what are the medications? Uh, the lithium and the floxity. Oh yeah, and, and what are the complications which you talked, you focused on the lithium? She is taking 60 milligram of fluoxetine. Okay. As a member of the Royal College, you must know that this dose is highly probable to affect the surfactant. So if you are not going to talk about the complications of fluoxetine as well as lithium, this is considered as a big mistake for someone proposing himself to be a member of the Royal College. You are supposed to be, I'm, I, I'm like you, okay? I, I, I will okay. be consultant, so. You don't know that this dose will affect the surfactant and the, mother, the baby must be put on the mother and baby unit, even if he's not taking lithium. If, if she's not taking lithium, this high dose is sufficient for him to be considered to be liable for problem in, in, in the level of surfactant. Okay, we did not write down the high dose of uh, fluoxetine for no reason. The scenario includes 60 milligram of fluoxetine. Why? They want to pick up the candles who will pay attention to this. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, let's go through the... Okay, let's see. Share the screen. Uh, and where is our station of lithium and pregnancy? Yes, this is... Okay, so the sequence of this events in the station might not go as, as you plan. You, you're, she, he is going to pose questions. So the first thing is to address his concerns, okay? Don't make it a lecture from one, you know, from one side. And pay attention that the diagnosis here is not bipolar depression. It is it, bipolar mood. It is mainly depression. So fluoxetine is the backbone, not lithium. Uh, there are side effects from lithium on the baby other than Epstein anomaly. Pay attention to this. Don't miss that the high dose of fluoxetine affect the surfactant development and causes respiratory problems, okay? Now you know the tricks here in this station. Your introduction, you did it very well. Uh, let's just increase the... Uh, too much. Okay, the explanation. So uh, you must say that 
the risk here, the risk of relapse of the mood. He, he did not talk about that the mood problem itself has a high rate of relapse up to 80%. Okay, and there are problems from lithium and also there are problems from surfactant, from fluoxetine. So these are the problems which her, his wife is going to face if she is going to go through the pregnancy. Is it a common side? Uh, is it going to have side effects? One in ten of the babies whose mothers are taking lithium will have malformation. Not only. If, please, doctors, mute your mics, please. Mute your mics, please, doctors. Okay. So one of ten of ten, one in ten of the babies whose mother are taking lithium uh, will have malformation. Okay, and lithium will increase all the types of malformation approximately by three times. It's not only the malformation of the heart, but the malformation of the heart is eight times. So all the side effects are increased by three times, and the heart problems are increased by eight times. And one in 10 of the babies whose mothers are having uh, taking lithium will have a malformation. Okay. The Ebstein anomaly in particular is increased between 10 to 20 times. So all of the candies focus on the Ebstein anomalies. There are other effects on the heart. They are increased by eight times. There are other malformations in the bodies which are increased by 10 times, by three times. Okay. I hope that it is clear, Doc. Okay. Answer professionally in order to make sure that you will impress the consultant. Show to him that you are different from the other candidates. The risk is small. Uh, is the risk the same over all over the pregnancy? You'll get this question definitely. The risk is more in the first three months. Can she breastfeed? Is not recommended as long as she's taking lithium. One of our friends. Now this is a question which most of the candidates. You will get it, and many of the candidates struggle to answer this question. One of his friends has been taking lithium, and she was pregnant, and the uh, child was totally safe. So how can we answer this question? So the first thing you must say to him that it is not the side effects are not one hundred percent. So this is what the first thing he must know, and the decision uh, it is the decisions of the couple whether to take the risk or no. However, the risk is high enough. Please mute your mics, doctors. However, the risk is high enough and the developmental problems are severe enough that the medical recommendation is to avoid the pregnancy while taking lithium. Okay? This is how you answer this question. It is a very common question in this station particularly. Okay? I'm wondering what would be the solution if she stops the lithium, she will relapse, and if she takes the lithium, she will not be pregnant because of the damage of the baby. Now you are going to gather the information, do your formulation, and let's see how you are going to manage, okay? First thing, what are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? I'll see Ms. X myself to explain the management and address her concerns. Very important to say this, doctor. And then because of the depression, uh, because the depression is controlled, she will be treated at home. But we know that the risk is high during the pregnancy. So there can be a risk of relapse. So there can be a need for admission. So we must talk about the possibility of admission. Okay, so this is what the first step. What are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? Number two, the investigations. Okay, and uh, the typical, in investigations, no need to explain the point of investigation. Number three, as we said, the perinatal team, which will cover all her needs physically, psychologically, and socially. Physically, you must lay with the obstetrician. Very important to talk about the role of obstetrician, which will plan for the pregnancy and follow up and the delivery and the mother and baby unit. Very important in this case to talk about the mother and baby unit, okay? So this is the physical part. Psychologically, again, you must talk about the risk of relapse if she is pregnant without taking the medications and the pregnancy itself increases the relapse. 
That's why it is very important to take her medications. However, there are different options and each option has its pros and cons and you will help him or her to take the right decision. Now you are going to talk about the medications. The first thing, talk about fluoxetine, that it is safe in pregnancy. However, because of the possibility of the effect on the surfactant, the mother and baby unit can be considered because of the respiratory problems. As for the lithium, there are different options and every option has its own pros and cons and you will help him with their, de with their decision. The first one is to decrease the lithium before pregnancy, then restarting it again after the first three months while keeping it in the lowest level. The dose of lithium will change during the pregnancy because of the changes in the body fluids. This will protect the mother from the relapse and at the same time, avoid the critical period of the uh, developmental, the critical period of the development, okay? The second option is to stop the lithium during the pregnancy. And this is safe for the baby's development, but carries risk of the relapse of the depression. The third option is to continue taking lithium in the smallest possible dose target, okay? And this option will prevent the relapse, but carries the risk of developmental problems. So these are the three options for the lithium, and it is their decision to decide which option is suitable for them and terminate by talking about the lithiums. Now always refresh your memory about the subject of the, uh, the station by, not, not by going through the textbooks, but just by going through uh, just visual materials will help you to understand what you are talking about, this will make you more confident, okay? These are some uh, visual, uh, these some images, explanatory images, which I have gathered from the uh, different, from different sources. I hope that you found it helpful, doctor, okay? Who would like to go next? Yeah, Joshua. What is your station, Dr. Joshua? Heroin is in pregnancy. Heroin use in pregnancy, okay. Heroin use. Ready? Just a minute, a few okay. seconds. Sorry. All right, so what, what's the name of the, the patient? Let's say that my name is Robin. I'm the husband of the patient. And her I'm name is Michelle. Today. Her name is Michelle and I'm Robin. Okay, ready? Yes, I'm ready. One, two, three, go. Hi, is it Robin? Yes. All right. My my name is Dr. Joshua Wukiki. I'm one of the psychiatrists working here. 
I understand that. Yeah. I understand that you have some concerns about your wife, Michelle. Okay. Yes, doctor. She 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 is taking heroin and and she's pregnant now. And I want to know more about what could be the problem of the baby and the pregnancy. Uh, I'm very concerned if the social services are going to take the baby from us. All right. Um, thank you very much for coming to see us at this time of them, especially now that she's she's pregnant. Um, it's important for you to know that the social services wouldn't want to take the baby except when the baby is in hand too. and then we'll do our best to see to the fact that uh, yeah our initial goes through the pregnancy smoothly well, okay doctor so what could be the problems on her on her and the baby and she's also taking methadone and heroin and i don't know what could be the problem on on the baby if she's taking all of these things yeah, I understand your concerns, certainly, but it is important for you to know that um, the use of methadone is safe during the pregnancy. But well, I'm wondering, what are, your, what are your concerns, really? What are your expectations? Well, I'm worried. I don't know what could happen to the baby and herself because of uh, what she is taking. Right. Um, I went to our notes and it appears that for the past few years she has been really consistent with the use of methadone and she has not used any other uh, drugs. So is there anything, is there any other drug that you know that she uses at the moment? What? Is there any other drug that you know that she uses at the moment? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe she's using one gram of heroin every week, something like this. All right. Um, how long has that been going on for? Well, for two or three years, something like this. Okay. Uh, well, from my notes, it appears like there's no there's no mention of her using heroin. But if that is the case, and now that she's pregnant, um, there might be a risk of affectation of the baby because um, heroin has a tendency to bring about abrupt miscarriage, especially at this time of the pregnancy. I see. Uh, but but this is not to alarm you. Um, now that you're here, we are going to um, liaise with the members from the addiction unit, and we'll look into how to really take out the heroin. But that will be when she gets into the second trimester of pregnancy. Okay, doc. So, uh, well, sometimes she's taking crack with me. Does this affect the baby? Yeah, the use of the use of crack really, Mr. Rodman, affects the baby in, in certain ways. Um, it may not bring about malformation in the baby, but it could cause it could cause miscarriage. And I understand that you 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 are really happy about the pregnancy, isn't it? So, uh, well, uh, can she breastfeed if she's taking methadone? Yeah, it, it, it depends really on on what the she walks out with her own psychiatrist, but methadone is really safe when when the woman prefers to breastfeed a baby. I see. Well, well, so how can we help her, doctor? So, um, uh, from, from what you've told me, um, Michelle, your partner has been has been using methadone in the past three years. But in addition to that, uh, there is occasional use of crack and also heroin. Um, these are the important points in, in our history, but to, to address this, we want to work with the other members of the multidisciplinary team. So in the short term, we want to encourage her to enroll in the antenatal care with the obstetricians so that they can really monitor the baby. And in addition to that, um, it may be important for her to book a meeting with the addiction services so as to look into the use of heroin and how she can be brought up with. Is, is that okay? Does that sound okay to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that, this, these are the things that we, we can do in the short term. And, and while she's going through this, you know, the psychologist could really give her supportive therapy as pregnancy in itself is, is a stressful state. And we could give her supportive therapy through the pregnancy. And then in the long term, we, we may need to make a, a, a pre bed plan for her. Would you like to know about this? Yeah, yeah, no problem. 
So this is the point that we we work with other specialists in the medical team, like the neonatologists and the social workers as well. Uh, the reason is with the continued use of this 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 substances, the baby is likely to have what is called a withdrawal symptom. Have you heard about that before? No. So so for this reason, we we, we plan to you know get her admitted into the modern baby unit so as to foster the bonding and then to also monitor the baby if she's going to have, if the baby's going to have something like this, this withdrawal syndrome. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. And then within this period, it is encouraged that you, you give her all the support that you can give her and then um, you'd also have some other nurses who would you know, follow up with your wife while she's at home to ensure that- she One minute remaining. Yeah. Are there, are there other concerns that you have? You know? No, I'm just wondering if, uh, well, how can I make sure that the social services are not going to take the baby? Uh, like, like, like I told you, um, as long as the baby is not seen to be in harm's way, and as long as you and your partner are doing well to take care of the baby, no one is going to take the baby away. Um, in the interim, we could teach you the other members of the team will let you know ways in which you can handle the newborn that is coming to the family and this will go a really long way to help. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you very much for talking with me. Um, I can schedule another meeting with you and your wife together and see ways in which you can you know, help with this condition. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, how do you feel about what you did? <laughs> Time. Okay, we don't prepare. <laughs> The voice was not very clear, doctor, but I feel that you did not prepare well for it. You did not prepare. Yeah. Okay, so let's see according to, give him some feedback, okay? Uh, it will be very helpful. Uh, let's see the feedback of our colleagues. Uh, well done, doc. So many twists in the written given tasks, but you, you, you should invite the board. Wow. Well, Dr. Fawa, Dr. You have one, this is definitely your friend, Dr. Fias or Tim. <laughs> I know this is your friend, Aki. <laughs> In the chat section, he is one of your friends. So let's see, according to our management plan, you introduce yourself, okay? And just so uh, say one of uh, simple empathy. Understand your ways, just assure that I do my best to help you, wife, and address your concerns. But the first thing you want to know is give us some information. So you want to know social information, how do you feel about the pregnancy and the stresses? Do you feel that the baby will have the care he needs? Okay. This is the first question, the social. The physical, you ask some questions about her physical conditions and then the risk, very important to all talk about the risk in this station. As I always say, you must show that you're a safe practitioner and you must always ask about the risk. Okay. What are the risks on the baby from the methadone and heroin she's taking? Now, regarding the heroin, talk about the effect of heroin that can cause stillbirth, low birth weight, premature delivery, withdrawal symptoms in the baby, very important to talk about the withdrawal symptoms and the baby after the delivery. Okay, and on the long run, the babies are more liable to develop behavioral problems. Pay attention to this. This is something also which they can just forget. It's not only about the developmental, the physical developmental problems, but there are also uh, uh, other miles, developmental milestones and psychological problems. As for the methadone, it is safe in the pregnancy. Sometimes she's taking crack, okay? Now, crack is, which is cocaine. So how can we address this question? She is taking cocaine. Let's see how can we talk about this cocaine? So I must say that the chance of having a birth defect is between three to 5%. Okay, but birth defects reported with cocaine are much higher, which include abnormalities in the brain, skull, face, heart, limbs, intestine. Just say that the brain, skull, and face enough, and the heart. Okay, just brain, skull, and heart. 
birth defects are very common. And the babies who are exposed to cocaine during pregnancy also have low birth weight, et cetera. And also cocaine causes a very serious uh, complication to the mother. That the placenta can be separated from the uterus and this can cause uh, severe bleeding and can be fatal for the mother and the baby. So don't forget this. It's not only a problem for the baby, it's also a problem for the mother. Can she breastfeed if she's taking methadone? No problem. If she's taking methadone, the dose of methadone can be adjusted because the amount which goes to the drink to the breast milk is negligible. So she can schedule his breastfeeding times according to the uh, peak of the methadone levels, which happens between uh, two to four hours after taking the medications. With the social cells take the baby, this is a very important question, okay? Having an addiction problem is not a must to take such action. However, the social services will ensure that the baby will have the care which he needs do, uh, by doing a care assessment. So it's not only, you must say that they will do a care assessment. This procedure ensures that the baby is safe and the partners will not have any legal consequences. How can I help? How can you help her? Okay. Then you do your formulation. I'm not going through the, the I've explained the formulation. And then talk about the management, please. You must be organized when you talk about the management, where she's going to be treated, and uh, what are you going to do? Okay. She's going to be followed up in the clinic, however. If there are any relapse, then can, she can be admitted. Investigations are very important, very important, doctor. Uh, and me, sorry, there is no relapse. I'm, uh, I'm tired. She will be followed up in the clinic and she will be uh, followed up regularly by a nurse at home. And the investigations are very important to talk about the investigation, particularly the blood board infections. Okay, are you with me, Dr. Joshua? Then she's going to be followed up by a perinatal team. You must talk about the perinatal team, which is specified, a, a specialized team for these type of problems, okay? You will cover her physical, psychological, and social needs. We start by the physical. You must talk about the liaise with the uh, obstetrician. Psychological, the substance misuse team will adjust the dose of methadone to help her in stopping heroin intake. Please don't say that, that your plan is to let her take heroin in the first three months. Uh, and, and this is a fatal mistake. And I don't think anyone will pass if he says this. Uh, I, I, maybe this, uh, my speciality is addiction and we cannot, you, you can never advise someone who has addiction problem to continue taking heroin because it is not advisable to do a withdrawal or detoxification in the first three months. So he can continue taking heroin and we can do detoxification in next in the after three months. Totally nonsense and totally wrong. Okay. And you it is better for you to have a good lawyer if you apply this in your real practice. Now, what, what, what happens is that you adjust the dose of methadone because this will help her to stop heroin. And after three months of this increased dose of methadone, if she wants to continue taking methadone, no problem. If she wants to do detoxification from the methadone, she needs to be admitted. Is it clear? Okay, don't say that she will take heroin in the first three months and she will depend on your therapeutic relation in order not to increase the dose. This is totally nonsense. We all know that those who have addiction problem cannot control the dose. It's not about your uh, therapeutic relation. It is the nature of the problem. They cannot control the dose, whatever the therapeutic relation is. And we don't advise anyone to take heroin. Okay, back to what is written in the PDF. So the substance misuse team will adjust the dose of methadone to help her in stopping the heroin intake. If she prefers to stop the methadone, the detoxification is preferably to be done 
after the first three months and in the hospital, okay? Regarding the social services, social support, you can book appointment with the social service. He keeps asking about the social services. So you can simply say to him, you can book an appointment with the social services to discuss this with them. Okay, you explain for him the role of the social services, but at the same time, he must talk with them to address their his concerns and understand what could be the next step. And finally, terminate by saying that you are going to share with him leaflets and so on. Uh, again, there are some helpful, uh, again, refresh your, this is a very important topic, refresh your memory by having some visual uh, images, images to help you, educational images. This was a lengthy session. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, doctors. I hope that you found it helpful. I will post this on the YouTube channel. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctors. Thank